Both of your feet should be on that line, right in the middle of that line. Was that, was that what you were asking? No, man. We had a vehicle that passed us at a high rate of speed in the center lane, cut over in front of me into the left lane, all the way over to the left, almost hit the curb, and then overcorrected back to the right, and then almost hit a car that was in the center lane, and all that happened in a period of about two or three seconds. There's always a fine line when you see that type of driving as far as do we make an immediate traffic stop, do we wait for a traffic violation, is it something that's going to go away, you know, sometimes you'll see people texting or they're not paying attention and they'll make a small mistake, so you have to establish that ongoing pattern of driving, um, you know, when you're specifically looking for impaired driving before you make a decision to do a traffic stop. Yeah, she is all over the road, back and forth, lane to lane, changing lanes, stopping way before she has to. We get past this construction up here, I'm gonna go ahead and do a traffic stop. In this particular case, one of the things that clued me right away was, um, you know, she was unable to park straight in a parking spot. She, she couldn't even park her car straight. When I went up to the window, immediately when she rolled down that window, I got that immediate odor of alcoholic beverage coming out of that car. It hits you right in the face. Um, I could see her eyes were bloodshot and glassy. Her eyelids were kind of droopy. She had a flush face, um, all potential indicators of impairment. Hi, good evening. Hey, how are you? Good, Deputy Abs of the Sheriff's Office. Do you have any idea why I stopped you? Yeah. Okay, okay. why? Because I was going out of the speed limit. Yeah, you were speeding. I was doing 45 and you passed me like I was standing still, but you're all over the roadway, back and forth, in and out of your lane. I would almost describe her as lethargic. She was very slow to respond to my questions. Her speech was at a, a slowed pattern. Um, it was also slurred at times while she was talking. and. Um, Sometimes I would ask her a question and she was non-responsive to the question I was asking or you know, the, que the answer that she would give did not correspond to the question. Feeling okay today? Yeah, okay, I understand. You feeling all right? Yeah. She was actually at a birthday party, celebrating a birthday for a friend who was an older gentleman. She was at a bar, a known drinking establishment in our area, um, and she admitted that uh, she had probably had too much to drink to be driving. All right, how much you had to drink today? I'm not going to lie, I had two drinks, and I'm sure I'm above the limit. You're above the limit? Okay, let me ask you a question on a scale of zero to ten, zero being stone cold sober and ten being passed out drunk. Where do you think you're at right now? Five. About a five, about halfway there. With the field sobriety exercises, there's certain things that we look for, like can she walk on the line? Can she walk heel to toe? Can she keep her arms by her side? Is she taking the correct number of steps? Does she turn properly? Like for example, in the walking exercise, there's eight potential things that we look for. I think in this particular case, she had five or six of those eight. Just stand right over here in front of me, just this side of that line. Put your feet together so your heels, come this side of that line for me. Put your feet together so your heels and toes are touching. And keep your hands by your side. And remember to watch the green light and don't move your head, okay? Based on the totality of everything I observed, her driving pattern, my interaction with her at the window, her poor performance on the field sobriety exercises, I made a decision to place her under arrest for impaired driving. Unfortunately, at this point, I have to place you under arrest for a DUI. Okay, I think you made a bad choice by driving today. I know you're trying to get to your friend's house and be done for the day, but probably, probably should have taken a cab or something to do that, okay? Once we get down to the jail, I'm going to ask you to take a breath test. Will you take a breath test? I'm going to think about my decision. Okay, absolutely. Jail, then I'm going to answer you at that point in time. Absolutely. This is a unique case in that uh, most of the DUIs that we do get are later at night um, when there's less traffic on the road and they're based on traffic stops. This particular instance, usually when we get DUIs at five or six o'clock in the afternoon, it's because of a crash. It's because they've already crashed into somebody and already potentially hurt somebody or themselves. So in this case, that's what made it even that much greater is that we were able to stop her before she hurt herself or somebody else. See, Listen, I'm, dude, I'm sorry. Hey, okay, dude, you I'm got sorry. a big knife right there. It. If you say you don't have any, you wouldn't let the plastic bag hang out. A uh, 2343, give me 94. Step it up. Get down! Drop it, Taser. Ah. Don't move, Robert. Put your hands on your back. Turn over. Put your hands behind your back now. They gave me, they, sir, they, I'm just saying, sir, they gave, me a, they gave me a gun and told me if I didn't do it that they were going to kill me.